the first thing we want to do is create table and we're going to call this users because every database has a users table, right? UUID, whoops, let's get that in there, right? UUID and then generate random UUID, it's going to be unique and then we'll do name and text and then let's add a stamp and we'll add a timestamp like that. We'll talk more about timestamps in just a second. We're going to add an ID. So now we're going to have our initial table, which in just a second we'll be able to add a relationship to. So let's say users have something. What do they have? Addresses. They have addresses, right? That's, that's a pretty default example. So let's add, go back to my schema, do create table, and we'll do addresses. And we'll start off with ID. This is the UID for this specific table, random UID. So users can have multiple addresses, right? So we'll put in user ID, and that's a UUID. And then we'll add address text. And then uh, actually we'll just leave it with address. We won't even add like state and stuff. Then they can be anywhere, right? It can be any type of address. You just add it in plain text. We'll add a primary key of ID. And then let's add a foreign key. And we'll go to, so we're in, this is the schema, various samples, which I just built. And then we built the users table and we want to relate it back to, or relate it from our user ID to the ID of the users table. And we have our different violation for update and delete. So we can cascade them, set them to null, do various things. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as restrict. That's, that's the default. And I'm going to click save. So that's going to give us our first foreign key. And this is just the relational database schema building part of this whole paradigm. I'm going to get to the relationship specifically in Hasura in just a second. And we'll talk about those. I'm going to add one more unique key. I'm going to pick address so people don't add the same address or you won't be able to add the same address, I should say. And then add table, okay? So now that that's added, we can go into modify and do other things to it, but let's take a look at relationships. This is the pertinent part to Hasura relationships. And these are key to giving you that really awesome graphing nature to the GraphQL of the entities in Hasura. And Hasura does all this for you as you build out these relationships. So we have the database relationships. That's all groovy. But in here you can go in and there's object and there's array relationships. So an object will give you a JSON object back of this thing related to the parent thing as you query it. If it's array, if it's possible to get an array of those things back to the parent related to the parent object, you can set up an array. In this case, we're gonna say add, call that user. And then we're gonna go back to user also, click on relationships there. And here, because of the one-to-many relationship in the database of this, a user can get an array of addresses back. So we're going to say, yes, please add that relationship. We'll name it addresses too. So now, just for an example, we're going to bounce over here, go into the GraphQL, and let's get a look at this. So here is our initial query users and addresses we'll call it that and then i want the name of the user and then i want the user's addresses right just like that now the beauty of graphql is we don't even need to ask for the ids and all that we don't need to do like a like in sql you'd have to do an inner join or whatever to relate back to whatever no nope, graphql this is all you got to do you got to ask for what you want and that's it and if we queried that we get that back, you can see that there would be an array if there was data to return. 